Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. We are doing this in natural lighting for a little bit, especially because I'm not actually putting products on. Anyway, hi guys, my name is Dana. If you did not know, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you're not new. So just a little caveat. I know like lately it's been a lot of talk about my eyes because I did have PRK, which is like a version of LASIK eye surgery and I don't want to film in natural or the studio lights today because my eyes are still pretty you know adverse to bright lights i'm also not putting anything on my face so you don't really need to see that and the natural light's kind of nice except for i think this side of my face being on so hopefully that's not too terrible <laughs> anyway so what i wanted to talk about today is i wanted to kind of give you guys my top five and i guess worst five sunscreens for the sephora sale now this is not like my year-end top five and worst five but i thought it was a good idea because you know, there's so many videos out there for the Sephora sale, like what to put in your basket, what to pick up. And I was trying to think like, what would be the most helpful for you guys? And I think what would be, and maybe I'm wrong, but you know, you guys will let me know, is what are the sunscreens that I think you should pick up in the sale when you're getting hopefully 15, maybe 20, maybe 10% off that maybe you wouldn't pick up otherwise. So I'm gonna go through what to pick up and what to avoid. Now. I guess you could say these are kind of my favorites because obviously if I'm telling you to pick it up, it is my favorite, but some of them are new, some of them are old. So it's kind of like just what can you get at Sephora versus my top five sunscreens of the year, which could be from brands that are not at Sephora, which could be from brands that you can only buy on their website, you know, that kind of thing. So just go in with that caveat and let's just get going, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna go through the top five, which ones I think you should pick up or at least consider putting in your basket. And they're not in any order. I tried to give you a good mix of chemical, mineral, matte, glowy, shimmery, you know, all of the things. So keep that in mind. I was trying to get kind of a variety, but of course there are many that are in that same or similar category that I didn't list that I also like, but I had to whittle it down to five, which is not always easy. So number one, and I'm just gonna put the pictures here. I have most of them, but I don't wanna go get them to be completely honest. And I don't know where all of them are. <laughs> so the number one is the Summer Friday Shade Drops. I've raved about this, I've talked about this. It was in my top five from last year. It's a spectacular sunscreen. It's a mineral sunscreen. It has a bit of a, a tint to it, but it's not like a pigment of like a shade, like light, medium, deep, dark, that kind of thing. It's more almost like a grayish beige, which would be grayish, I guess. <laughs> it's very fluid. It's also very easy to put on. There's not a lot of rubbing and tugging and pulling on your skin. And it also kind of dries down to a more kind of natural matte finish, which I love, especially for the summer. It's one of the few mineral sunscreens that I can wear in the summer when it gets really hot and humid here. And I wore it pretty much exclusively last summer and have pretty much used up my bottle. So I might actually consider buying my second bottle during the sale. The next one is a chemical one. This is the Shiseido. This is the, I never remember the name of it, Ultimate Sun Protector. Um, you've heard me talk about this over the years. I think it's been in one of my top favorites for maybe two years ago or three years ago. This is just a wonderful sunscreen that kind of works year round on all skin types and is waterproof. It has a really nice kind of glow to it. So if you are looking for something that has a little bit of a healthy glow to it, I would say, this is absolutely one you could use. It's great to use on your body, your neck, your face, anywhere. It does have a slight perfume to it. I find it really nice, but it not, I guess it's not like perfume, but it is a scent. But I haven't heard that the scent irritates people and I've never had any eye sting from it. So for a chemical sunscreen, it's kind of all you can ask for, but it is pricey, it's Shiseido. So I would recommend picking up, they have different sizes. Um, I would recommend picking one of those up during the sale. Okay, the next one I have right in front of me. You know what? I do have a few of them in front of me. Here's the Summer Fridays. It's pretty much done so. And then the next one I have is the Say Sun Visor. This is their newer version and I have to double check and I will comment below if this is available on Sephora now because they reformulated their first version. The first version I don't like. So if that's the one that's the only one available on Sephora, I will try to let you know, but it's not good. <laughs> they just like, 
this is what I think Say does. I think they put out a formula and it's like, okay, we got it. It's good enough. Let's put it out. And then like people don't like it or there's something like visibly wrong with it. And so then they have to reformulate and then they come up with a second version and it's usually really great. And I'm saying that because I'm thinking that with their new foundation, I feel like that is the same. But back to this sunscreen, this one is stunning. But it has this kind of natural radiance to it. And I think that's the word I'm gonna use, radiance, because it's not shimmer, it's not glitter, but it's also not just like your natural glow. It does have pigment. And within that pigment, there's kind of this just beautiful radiance um, to your skin. I recommended this to friends. They adore it. I adore it. The only thing besides the fact that I don't like how they like formulate things to fail the first time, I don't like this airless pump. It doesn't ever work. I have to end up just squeezing it out this way. And then this shelf life on it is not great. Mine is kind of like curdled and I would say like, I'm not going to put this on my face. The other day I thought it, I saw like green inside there. So, you know, sometimes when you buy from clean beauty brands, I wouldn't say their shelf life is super great, but this one is supposed to be good until t May of 2024. So I'm actually going to reach out to say because this should not have happened. I think it might be because the pump doesn't work and I have to open it all the time. But all those things said, <laughs> if your pump works, this is a stunning, stunning sunscreen and I still recommend it. I just think that like, you know, they have a little tweaks to do here and there. And I, I really think this is one of those sunscreens that you can double as your makeup and like just looks absolutely stunning on skin. Okay, the other one I have in my bathroom, I just reviewed this. This is the new Kosas um, Dream Beam, I think it's called Super Beam. I don't <laughs> Comfy Cloud Beam. I, these names, I mean, it's just a sunscreen. But this sunscreen is absolutely amazing. I would say it's comparable to the Say, but in terms of coverage, this one has like quite a bit of coverage. So you're gonna get pigment. It's gonna actually look a little bit more like makeup. I mean, of course, if you put more on, it'll look more and more like makeup, but the Kosas one has that kind of look to it, but it feels lighter and you really don't get as much of kind of coverage or pigment in it. It also doesn't have like a darker pigment, so I think it's gonna work on a little bit more skin tones. The same one might work on a lot of skin tones, but I think for really light, fair skin, it might actually be a little too dark. But back to the Kosas one. So the Kosas one has kind of like a pinky, um, kind of, yeah, I guess pinky peach hue to it. And so that it kind of cancels out any of the zinc oxide, it's also mineral. And it just really leaves your skin this kind of same radiance, it sets down more than the Say. So if you have drier skin, I would go with the Say. If you have more normal or oily, I would go with the Kosas. But they're both gonna give you kind of that like natural, radiance, almost makeup, makeup, no makeup, that kind of look. So those are my two suggestions if you're looking for something like that. And then the last one in my top five is kind of crazy that I'm saying this because if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know that Supergroup and I, we don't always get along. But the Supergroup Unseen Sunscreen is great. It really is. I also love the fact that you can get three sizes. I believe there's a mini, there's a regular, and now they have like the, the jumbo size. So if you're picking it up in the sale and you really do like it, of course, go for the jumbo. Their prices actually for the Unseen are more affordable than some of their other sunscreens, and you do get more product. It's just one of the best invisible sunscreens. And you know, I do like the Peter Thomas Roth one. That one's a bit thicker though and it is available in the Sephora sale. But then there's some other invisible sunscreens that are not available at Sephora. That's why I'm not mentioning them. But I think if you're gonna go for something that's completely invisible, is a good base for your makeup, that kind of thing, I would say during this sale, definitely pick up the Unseen from Supergoop. Now, let's jump into the ones to avoid. <laughs> so I have reviewed all of them because that would be weird if I was telling you to avoid something, but I hadn't reviewed it. So I will always try to link the video above, but the first one I would say to avoid, and this one might be, you know, you might be tempted to buy it because I was tempted, but it's the Soleil Toujours. And I would say the whole brand, or at least the two that I reviewed, and I will link that video above. Um, I reviewed the mineral one, which comes in like a five fluid ounce size. I will put a picture here. And then also the kind of, I think it was like a non-tinted mineral one. The non-tinted mineral one did exactly what a non-tinted mineral sunscreen is gonna do. It's gonna leave a white cast. 
it's like $60, so why would you do that? <laughs> like, even if you're okay with non-tinted mineral, you can just buy a cheaper one because there are a million cheaper ones out there. The tinted one though is intense. Uh, you would only need like one small little dab of it. And then because you have five fluid ounces of it, you're just never gonna use it. I also thought it kind of left me looking like a golden like peach. Like it, the, the tone was just completely off. And I'm not saying that of course every tone is gonna work for me, but I just don't see it working that well for a lot of people. Okay. Number three, Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow SPF or whatever. So this one is a hybrid sunscreen and I haven't mentioned a lot of hybrid sunscreens mainly because they don't always work that well for me. And this one was a big fat fail. It has this like tingle to it and your skin. So I had a really hard time using it anywhere around my eyes. My eyes were, and this was like pre-eye surgery. I don't want my eyes tingling. I don't want my sunscreen tingling. I don't want, I really don't need like vitamin C in it. I think that it's one of those cases where they're trying to do too much and it almost would be better if they just took out a few ingredients. I think it could work for some people. The tone is not terrible. It did leave a little bit of a cast on me, but it just overall, like, I don't think you should be putting on something that tingles around your eyes if you're looking for something that is as functional as sunscreen is. So not for me. Okay, you know what? This is sounding a lot like a rant on non-tinted mineral sunscreens. <laughs> There's a reason for that though. My reason is if you want a non-tinted mineral sunscreen, by all means, go for it. There are millions of them out there. Well, not millions, but you know what I mean. So I don't think you have to spend an arm and a leg to get one though. Okay, the next one, number four, we have the Do Dr. Dennis Gross, what is it, All Physical Lightweight Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF. So I did a video on this years ago. I will try to find the link to that. And this one retails for $42, so it's not the most expensive. Some of the other, like Dr. Brandt, are like $60, whatever. But it has a white cast. It's a little bit more fluid, so it's okay. But when I'm telling you that you can find non-tinted mineral sunscreens for less than $42, you can like i just don't think that it's worth your money so i don't have a lot more to say on this i just think it's a little bit too expensive and even with a discount for most people out there unless you're the lightest of the light it's going to leave a cast on you and then the last one that i would not recommend are either of the drunk elephant umbra tints so i actually loved the umbra tint the tinted one umbra tint tint <laughs> maybe it's just called the umbra sunscreen because they have one that's non-tinted and one's tinted so maybe that's it. I used to like the Umbra tint, and this was years ago. I mean, like we're talking like three, four years ago. And then they reformulated it, which, you know, can be good, can be bad. It was odd. It wasn't like anything I felt had visibly changed, but when I put it on, my face would start to sweat. <laughs> like the sunscreen made my face sweat. I have heard from other people that it did something similar. I'm not sure if it's just some ingredient in there. I don't have sensitive skin, so I don't know why it did that but it just wasn't it for me. And maybe they, if they reformulate it again, I'll try it. Their regular non-tinted one is very casty. You know, I would put that on like babies or if you have very light skin, but otherwise you're gonna just have to cover it with something. So I think the point <laughs> of this ones to avoid part is that you should avoid non-tinted unless you are either very light skin or if you are okay covering it with some makeup. But if you are looking for a non-tinted mineral sunscreen, I always recommend that you just go with something a bit more fluid. I also have a drugstore one that has some cheaper options and most of them are more fluid. So I will link that because I, th I think that one is pretty useful. But otherwise, if you get one that's really thick and like kind of pasty feeling, it's gonna be harder to blend in. It's probably gonna leave a cast. And of course, like not on all skin tones, but if you have anything other than very fair or light, it probably will. So they're just not my favorite. And I think, I think there are a lot of sunscreens out there that are a better use of your money. And yeah, that's where we're going to leave it. So I hope this was not too long. I feel like I'm rambling now, but if you do enjoy this video, if anything here interests you, you know, I will always list everything below. And if you do shop with those links, it does help my channel. Um, and then I just buy more sunscreens. So that's always very helpful. And I do thank you for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.